Hey Rob, I have a question for you. Are there any snacks or treats that you must have when you're playing or running a game? Well, Ross, seeing how I had banned snacks from high school D&D, obviously because we're recording and we don't want to hear someone munching on Cheetos and Cheez-Its, Paul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we haven't been doing snacks, but some things I do like to eat, I, use, I like to eat fruit. Um, fruit kind of energizes me through games. You know, it gives you that, it gives you sugar but not the sugar that makes you crash so i usually like to eat fruit and if i can't eat fruit if there's just nothing else i like to eat popcorn um i used to work at a movie theater for a long time and we'd always come home with big bags of popcorn after work from what we just didn't sell i haven't had a soda in like 10 years so i don't drink soda but i do drink green tea so if you guys see me drinking anything on camera that's green tea i'm pretty boring it's green tea and coffee usually but i, I try not to drink coffee so late and we play late games uh, i guess as far as guilty pleasure i may eat like oatmeal raisin cookies here or there <laughs> How do you like to prepare for sessions? I guess more, what is your note-taking style and how do you like to go about getting ready for all the crazy stuff that we might do? So I like to build my games around my players. Usually I go through my players' backstories and I try to write up what I call, I guess, role play encounters. And I try and create points of tension or conflict. You know, any good story is gonna have conflict. So you have to be able to create that internal conflict, that external conflict. You have to be able to make things move because if it doesn't move, then it's boring. Sometimes the players don't give me a lot to work with. And that's not the case as much in high school D&D. I have a lot to work with. But whenever that's the case, what I try to do is I try to go to the player themselves and I ask them questions and I just try to dig in a little bit. What's your family like? Where's your family from? Where are you from? What, what, uh, what's your background? Like what, what did you do before all of this? You know, what's your, what's your character's interests? What's your character's motivations? Do you, does your character love anyone? Does your character hate someone? And then just, I try to make everything really character centric, but at the same time, the mechanics do offer things. So look at the skills, look at the spells, you know, is there things I can do whenever I'm building dungeons or building encounters to make something interesting based off of what this character can do. Sometimes the characters don't see that and I'll try and leave them hints like, Hey, I built something around what you can do. And it feels forced sometimes, and I try not to let it feel forced, but generally, you know, the characters are smart enough to be able to catch on. And I let the characters and the players take the driver's seat, and a lot of the times I react to them. So my NPCs and my story, I have something set for it usually. And that story happens almost regardless of what the players do. Sometimes I have to improvise and say, okay, they didn't go down a path I wanted them to, but that's okay. I will make it happen regardless. The biggest challenge is you don't want your players to feel like you're completely railroading them and it's a difficult task and sometimes you fail at it. And I mean, hey, none of us are perfect, right?